Hi, I'm Teresa Coates. I'm the National Educator for Shannon Fabrics, and I am excited to be here at Missouri Star Quilt Company. We are working on the Just Keep Swimming Kit. This kit has three projects inside of it. So it has a quilt, a play mat, and a little whale stuffy. You can find tutorials for the other two, but today we're gonna do the little quilt that's in here. So I'm gonna go ahead and unpack this. So inside I've got all the materials for all the projects. I'm gonna go ahead and pull the ones out that I don't need, including the panel and the backing for that play mat. So make sure there's nothing tucked inside because sometimes they get built that way. So I'm gonna put those aside and we're gonna work on these fabrics. Oh, and this blue one too. That goes over there. I'm pretty sure. If I'm wrong, we'll go find it. All right, so I've got the little pattern in here. We're going to work with a variety of different fabrics. I'm gonna lay these out here for you. So we have the print, that is the Sea Life print. We have one for the backing, one for the middle of the quilt. This is the Lux Cuddle Paloma, and that's gonna be for a couple of strips. We have two five inch strips for that. We've got a strip of the Galaxy that is for the binding. So this is one way that you can tell your binding is generally speaking, especially on the smaller kits, it's going to be the full width of the fabric. So it's gonna be the whole 60 inches wide. That will be the binding. So I'm gonna go ahead and put that to the side too because I don't wanna tackle that quite yet. When we get to the binding, I'll do that. Okay, and then I've got this Galaxy, which is the shorter strips. So I need to know that these are part of the kit because they are smaller. Okay, so I'm gonna put those aside as well. We're gonna start with the backing. So the, the strip quilts are made as a quilt as you go sort of technique, and you can do these with batting, without batting, or today we're gonna to do it with a flannel interior to give us some stability to that. So you can use pre-washed flannel, pre-washed cotton. You just wanna make sure that you've washed it and get any sort of shrink out of it that's gonna be there. And we're just gonna use the white flannel for this to give it a little bit of stability while I'm working with it. Okay, so I'm gonna get these put aside and I'm gonna go ahead, get this open. The first thing I wanna do is get my batting or the flannel, which I'm using today, and the backing together. So they will work as one piece. And so I'm just basically gonna combine the flannel and the backing fabric by using the basting spray. So what I wanna do first before I spray anything is get some, fab or some, yeah, some fabric out here so that I can overspray and it won't be a problem. So I've just got some, some plain cotton that I put out. And this is what will cover the area so I don't overspray any of my other fabrics or my board or my sewing machine. I don't wanna get basting spray on any of that stuff if I don't have to. Then I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna lay down the part that has more stability, which is going to be the flannel. If I were using batting, this is when I would lay that down first too. And I'm gonna lay this out. Okay, and this is a little bit bigger than my backing, which is what we want it to be. So I'll lay that out nice and flat. Get my fabric to lay flat underneath there just so I can't see too many bumps or it will get confusing. And I'm gonna lay this so that I can tell which one is the top and which one is the bottom. So this one is pretty easy because it's a print. So I can tell it's a directional print. There is definitely a top and a bottom to this. If you don't have a directional print, you're gonna to want to, to pet the fabric along the length of the fabric. So the width of the fabric will have a little bit of stretch. The length of the fabric does not have any stretch, but that's where the nap is. So you would wanna pet that. Where it's smooth, that's the nap going down. Where it kind of ruffles up, that's the nap going up. So you always wanna make sure you know which way the nap is going down, all right? So like I said, this one is pretty easy because it's directional. It's easy, I can just look at it and tell which way it goes. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna pull this whole thing back so I can reach it a little bit better. I'm gonna go ahead and pull this back toward me. Now I wanna spray the back of this, but I wanna make sure that I'm not spraying the right side of this fabric. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm just gonna use a piece of scrap paper that I had, and I'm gonna tuck that right under the edge so that it covers up anything I don't want to spray. And then I've got the fabric on the other side so that if I overspray anywhere else, it's getting onto that extra fabric and onto any of my stuff. Okay, so I'm using the OD505 spray, which I really like because it washes out, it doesn't smell, it's easy to use. So I'm just gonna go ahead and spray the back of this. And I'm gonna push this up and get this to stick down to the flannel fabric. I'm gonna give it a little pat. Okay, 
So now the easiest way to continue spraying it is to actually turn this around. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. I'm gonna just grab all of it because it's a pretty small quilt. If it were a larger quilt, it'd be a little bit more work. I have to be real careful to get it turned around nicely, but this one's an easy one to start with. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and pull this back. So I'll neaten up my flannel, pull this back, just to the point that it starts to stick a little bit. I'm like, okay, I reached the edge. So then I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna spray this section. And then I will push that up nicely. We just call that swimming it up, which I think is kind of funny for this kit, but it's true. I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing. Okay, so I don't have to use that, pan that paper panel until I'm going to spray where it's gonna hit the right side. So at this point I can just kind of spray it. Go ahead and make sure and cover my machine. And then again, I'll put my hands under here and just kind of roll it up. What that does, it keeps it nice and smooth. And then if I have any areas like here, it kind of did a little pucker for me, I'm just gonna pull that, straighten it back up and reposition it. And one of the things that I really like about the 505 spray is that it is totally repositionable. It kind of has the tackiness of a post-it, which I like. So there, you can put them down, pull it back up. It's very, very repositionable. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead, put that out. It's gonna have to come back to here. So this is a part that if I sprayed now, I'm very likely to get it on here. So I'm gonna go ahead and put my paper back under. And just under that edge so that it's covering up the right side. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm just gonna spray the back of this last little bit. And that way any overspray is on my paper. I'm just gonna roll it up, pat it down. Okay, so now these two pieces of fabric, both the flannel and the cuddle piece are gonna act as one piece. I wanna kind of Turn it over, see how it is, make sure that there's no puckers in this part. If there are, I can just reposition the fabric. This is totally fine. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and find the center of the fabric. So this is the lengthwise center. So I'm gonna fold it so the top to bottom. And I'm just gonna fold it in half so that these match. I'm gonna flatten my fabric there because I can see it got a little pulled. So then I'm going to just match up my corners of the cuddle fabric. Bring it over here. And I'm going to go ahead and just mark right on that fold where that's at. I'm going to do the same thing over here. And measure it from corner of fabric to the fold. And mark it right on that edge. So I'm just using a fabric marker that'll come out in the wash. No big deal. Okay, then I'm gonna go ahead and lay this out because I'm gonna do one more spraying here. We're gonna kinda lay it out, take it away, lay it out. So I'm gonna start here. Now sometimes when I'm doing this, it can get confusing which one is the top and which one is the bottom. So there's a couple of things that you can do. You can write top up here. I like to draw a little arrow and that helps me remember which way my nap will go. So when I'm putting all of the pieces on here, I'm gonna make sure that the nap is all going in the same direction. So I'm gonna start out with my center piece, which is also the same print as on the back. My little tag that we'll keep for later. So this print again is directional and it's nice enough to be folded in half for you. So you already have half marks on here that you're gonna line up here. So this fold line will come out when you wash it. You can also steam it or press it from the back if you really want to to get it out, but it should come out just fine in the wash. So I'm gonna take my center fold, put it right along those lines that I marked to make the center of my strip here match with the center of my backing. Go ahead and fold this over here. Make sure that I've covered all of my right side so that when I spray this, I'm only spraying the backing. And I'll bring that. 
that over and kind of just lay it down gently and get my centers to match up. And give it a good pat. And then I'll do the same thing on this side. Make sure I keep everything covered that doesn't want to get some spray. And again, I'm just going to kind of roll this down, get the centers to mark to match. Right, so we've got the first strip down. So now we're going to kind of go back and forth with the basting and the stitching. So I'll have to lay that out a few times, make sure that we're covering our area so we're not getting basting spray on anything else. But the next thing we're gonna do is put on our strips. So to put the next strips on, I'm actually gonna to have to cut them in half. So when they come, they come in larger strips. You can cut them in half, or you can leave them as larger strips and that's totally fine too. I'm gonna to show you how to cut them in half so that we can make them just like the pattern. So we'll go ahead and fold this over here and bring out these strips. So these are the Paloma, which is just a really pretty, really pretty Lux Cuddle fabric and it has a very fun design in it. So this is the width-wise of the fabric, which has a little bit of stretch to it. This is the lengthwise, which doesn't have any stretch and has the design that goes that direction. So we're gonna cut this in half width-wise, basically. So along here so that we can get two thinner strips. And we'll do both of these. One of the things to note is that when they do these strips, when they cut them, they're supposed to be a five inch strip. And generally they're a little bit more than five inches. So this one is just about at five and a half inches. I just cut it in half, I don't try to straighten it up. And we just give you a little bit extra so that you don't have to be too exact. One of the great things about cuddle is that you don't, you generally don't have to be too exact, which is great. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna measure it just past two and a half inches. Straighten it up on the end. Let me see what this is. It's a little bit wider there. So I'm gonna do two and a half and then slide it up. So it'll be just about even. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and mark this with, it's just a Sharpie pen. I'm just gonna draw a line. Right down here that I can see nice and clearly on the back of that. Okay, so this piece, I can see this gets a little bit wider up here. I'm just gonna kind of measure it and see where we're at. So it's a little bit bigger. And I'm gonna try to even these up just a little bit, mostly because I found that if they are too uneven, it's visible. And this gets a little more uneven. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna mark it. I'm gonna trim both of those. Okay, I'm gonna measure this one. So let me measure this one at both ends. We've got almost six inches and almost six inches. I'm gonna divide that in half. And I'm gonna do just under three inches. So you can go ahead and trim it to five inches and then divide it in half if you want to. I just go with the less cutting if I can. All right, so I've got both of those marked. Okay, so then I'm gonna use my blade, which I like, it's kind of a, a craft knife, to be able to cut this. So I'm just gonna hold some tension on it. I'm gonna drag it right down the line. And what this does, rather than using a rotary cutter, this leaves a lot more of the nap on the fabric so that when I pull it apart, it doesn't make such a mess. So this is my favorite way of cutting Lux Cuddle. Works much better to me than the rotary cutter. You absolutely can use the rotary cutter. You can also use the scissors. I really like the Karen K. Buckley scissors for working with Lux Cuddle. And I'm just gonna slide these right underneath the backing and just cut just the backing. And that works very well in the same way that it will cut less of the nap. I find that the blade works best. So we'll go ahead and I'll cut all of these with that. The biggest key with this is to keep some pressure on the fabric so it doesn't just pull. Okay, so we're holding some pressure against it. 
and then just dragging it as flat as possible down that line. So not really using the point, but using the flat of the blade a little bit more. Make sure that these are pulled apart. Go ahead and give them a shake. Put those aside and then I'll do the other ones. Okay, so this little one I'm gonna to need to use my scissors with this as I get closer. I'm gonna start up here, see if I can get it to cut. So I have to hold it a little bit tighter to get these thin areas. So sometimes this is a little bit easier to take the rotary cutter or the scissors to. Um, I'll take the scissors to it, make sure I catch all these little areas. Pull it apart. Because I can't get as good of a hold on it, the, the cut won't be quite as perfect. There we go. And I'm just gonna come down the rest of this, hold that out of the way. And trim this little bit off, just to even that strip up a little bit. Okay, now I can throw that away. And I will go ahead and divide this into using the craft knife again. You can see it just makes such less mess so little mess comparatively. When you cut it with a rotary cutter, it really can get a little bit messy. When you're doing this at home, once you've made these cuts, you can also go throw it in the dryer with a wet washcloth, and it will tumble around for a few minutes and knock off a lot of that cuddle dust, and it'll end up in your lint trap. And then it makes it very easy to sew. If you don't have a dryer to throw it into, you can kind of vacuum the edges or give it a good shake, and most of that cuddle dust will kind of fall off as you go. You do want to make sure that you've get, gotten rid of the cuddle dust before you start sewing. It's really important. You don't want to get that near your machine. You don't want to yeah, get any of the cuddle dust into your bobbin case if you can avoid it. So we always do recommend that you clean your machine after making something like this. We also recommend that you clean your machine often. So people are often surprised at how messy they can get under there. All right, so I've got four of these two and a half inch strips, two and a half ish. Okay, and I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna put the first two on. So I'm gonna lay this back out again. And I'm gonna put a couple of strips on here. Okay, and I'm gonna use the pair because they were exactly the same size because my two strips were slightly different. So those two pairs, of strips are slightly different sizes. So I'm gonna put a pair together and a pair together. So this first one, I'm gonna go ahead and put it up here and I'm gonna to try to see if I can figure out which way the nap goes. This way, the nap is going this direction. So I'm gonna turn it because I've got my arrow that tells me my nap needs to go this direction. Like I said, I can also tell that because of my directional print. So I've got that one up here. I'm gonna go ahead and flip that over. So I always give it a check first, put it in position how I want it. That seems right, now I can flip it right sides together. So I'm gonna pin this by starting at one end and I'm just gonna lay it flat, not stretching it. Where does it land? That's where I'm gonna pin it here. So I can see just a little bit of the back fabric. I'm gonna lay it flat, not stretching it. And then I'm gonna pin it over here at this end. Okay. Then I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna pin it in the middle. I'm just gonna make sure that I can see a little bit of that back fabric so that it doesn't pull. And when I stitch it, it'll catch both layers. So once I've got the end, the end, and the middle pin, I'm gonna go ahead and pin in between. So I'll divide this up again. And I'm actually gonna pin quite a lot just to keep the cuddle in position as we sew. For me, I find it a lot easier to pin more to keep it in position than I like to fix the seams later, I'd rather pin more now. So once we've gotten this first layer done, the first row of pins, you kind of want to think that you could just take it to your machine and sew right now, but honestly, if you do a double row of pinning, it makes it so much easier. So the first row will be taken out as we sew, and that second row of pins will hold it in position as we're sewing it to keep the fabric where we want it to be and stay there as we sew it and we take that first row of pins out. So I'm gonna add a second row in all of our patterns, including the kit instructions here, you'll see instructions for double pinning. And this is what we mean by that. 
is this second row of pins. So that first one is usually a quarter to a half an inch away, usually less than a, less than a half, and then the other one is about an inch away. So there's no prescription for that exactly. It doesn't have to be perfect, but that's what we're going for. All right, so now I'm actually gonna flip this around. I'm gonna pin the other side as well. You can pin both sides. You can do one at a time. I'm gonna do both. So I'm gonna turn it around. So now my nap is heading this direction. So I want the nap on my next piece to do that same thing. So I'm gonna look at it and see what it's doing. It wants to go that way. So I'm put it here. The nap flows from one to the other. I'm gonna turn this over and put this strip down. So we'll do the same thing. Pin an end and end the middle. And then we'll pin in between there. All right, so now I've got both sides pinned and I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna go sew them. So the nap is running from top to bottom. When it flips over, it'll be smooth the whole way. If you push this way, it'll feel a little bit rough and that's just the nap of the fabric is kind of the way, the direction of the fibers as they lay down. And each of the fabrics is a little bit different. So you kind of need to pet them and see, but it always run lengthwise. So we wanna make sure that it runs top to bottom on the quilt. If it ends up being messed up somewhere, it's okay, I promise. All right, so we're gonna go set up my machine. It should be on a straight stitch. We're gonna use a 3.0 stitch length. Okay, make sure that that's right. We've got polyester thread, a 9014 stretch needle. I'm gonna grab my stiletto because I like it so much. And I'm just gonna stitch all the way down this. I'm gonna use the side of my foot as my guide. It's a half inch seam allowance that's given to you, but I usually use the side of my foot because it's easy to tell where it's at. And I always wanna make sure that I can see a little bit of fabric sticking out on the side. So I always wanna be able to see it as I'm sewing. So I'm gonna take my first pin out now that my machine, or my fabric is in position in my machine. I'll back stitch just a little, just to secure it and then we'll go forward. Okay, so as I'm sewing, I'm gonna kinda help it through just a little bit. I don't wanna help it too much. We're not gonna pull it. The biggest thing that you can do is keep the weight off the needle by keeping the fabric on the table. or keeping a little bit weight up this direction as it's sewing. And I usually keep a hand in the back just to guide it through. I'm gonna stop before I get to the pins so that I don't hit any of the pins while I'm sewing. But that second row of pins over here, that double row, will stay there and the heads will slide right underneath the walking foot so that they stay there, they secure the fabric, and I don't have that fabric shifting on me at all. So here I feel like I'm getting a little close to this green pin, so I'm gonna go ahead and take it out because I don't wanna hit it. and I don't wanna go too slowly around it. So if I'm careful, I can leave that whole second row in. Sometimes I have to take out a pin or two. The first row will all come out as we go. So again, I feel like that's gonna be a little close. So now, as I see, as I get close to this, I'm gonna take the pin out, it'll be my last one. So I'm gonna go ahead and put a pin across the bottom here to hold this in position so that when I take this pin out, my fabric still isn't gonna shift on me. So I'm gonna get down to the end, do a little back stitch, and go ahead and take it out. All right. Now, this is why I like to do pin both sides because now I'll take these pins out. I can just turn it around and pin the other seam while I'm here. So I find this makes it a little bit easier because I can pin two rows then sew two rows. Go over here, do the same thing where I stick it underneath, get it down so I can see a little bit of the fabric over there. If I put my needle down, it'll hold the fabric even better. Then I can back stitch and work my way across. All right, so 
Now we've backstitched it. I'll take it out, cut my thread. And again, take out the rest of my pins. I'm just gonna use these pins over and over today to do these strips. And since all the strips are the same width, I should be using about the same amount of pins on each row. So now I've got my center strip and I've got two strips sewn on. So at this point, we're just gonna keep doing the quilt as you go method and we'll stitch the next one out. But it's really important that as we go, we're actually going to spray base down each of these rows to keep it nice and flat. What it wants to do is kind of curl up. So you can see because it's a knit fabric, it wants to curl. The easiest way to keep it flat is actually the spray base and not just pinning it. All right, so this will protect those edges as we come off. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this scrap paper under there just under the edge, just to protect all of the right side of the fabric. And I'll go ahead and spray that. And then I'm just gonna push it up and kind of tug it just a little bit as I push it down to get it to lay nice and flat. Give it just a little pull. Okay, so we're not really stretching it. This is the lengthwise of the fabric, so it won't stretch very much anyway, but we do definitely want to not, not pull too much. Okay, so I'm gonna flip it around because I always have an easier time pushing the fabric away from me. So I will flip this, reposition, and do the same thing here. And spray the back of this strip. You can tell I'm not spraying a whole lot. It doesn't need a lot. It's just keeping it in position until we get the next strip sewn on. I also sew the back of the strip and not the batting as I, or the flannel, as I found that if I spray on the back of the fabric, it tends to sit on the top and stick better than if I spray it to the backing or the batting or the flannel, whatever is back here. So to the, or um, spray it on the strip instead. Okay, so now if I flip this over, you can see how this is working and it's gonna stitch through the entire thing. It's sewn those two layers on as well as quilting it. So if you use batting, this will quilt it enough for you. But since we're using the flannel, it doesn't matter how much it's quilted, but it does make it go together really easily. All right, so I'm gonna flip this so that it is right side up for me. And we'll do our next strip. So our next strips are gonna be these blue ones here. Okay, so we're gonna put these on. I wanna make sure the nap is going in the right direction. I'm gonna tell you that with these galaxies and with hide some of the other fabrics, it's really hard to tell which way it's supposed to be going. So you can pet it and you get to pick which one feels nicer. It really doesn't matter too much. It can go either way. It won't make any difference. You just wanna make sure that when you're working with the fabric, you know that widthwise is the stretch, lengthwise is the nap and no stretch. Put this on here, flip it right sides together. I'm gonna to go ahead and move this closer so I can see it a little better. As a right-handed person, I wanna pin it further away from me so that I can put my pins in this way so that they can come out easily as I sew. If you were left-handed, you can pin closer to you and it'll be a little easier. So on the last strip, we, uh, we mark, or we didn't mark it, we just pinned it. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna mark this one, to show you how you can do it if you have a hard time keeping that half inch seam allowance. So I'm just gonna put my ruler on here along the edge. And I'm just gonna mark a guideline for me to sew a half an inch. Okay, and because that edge isn't perfectly straight, I'm just kind of even it up, find a, a basic half inch. Let me finish up that line. Okay, so now I'm gonna pin this just like I did before. And as we sew it, I can follow this line to stitch it so that it has an even half inch seam allowance. For some people, finding that half inch is a little bit hard and this is a great way to be able to keep it nice and even. The other thing is it does is it lets you pin so that you can carefully make sure that it's not gonna hit your sewing line. So again, the end, the end, the center, 
and then in between. So next we're going to go ahead and sew both of these sides. I'm going to sew this one first to show you how to do it with the stitching line already drawn on there. So I'll go ahead and put that underneath my foot and get the needle centered right above that line. We're just going to follow that line all the way down with our seam. So by following that line, I was able to keep all of my pins in position because I'd been able to put them so that it wasn't going to hit them and just followed the line the whole way. All right, stitched it all the way through. So I'm gonna leave the pins in there while I switch it around and do the other side. All right, so now I've sewn both of those seams. This one with just the half inch seam allowance using my walking foot, and this one I used the line. So either one of these are totally usable for you, whichever works best. I say give them both a try because you never know which is gonna be your favorite technique until you give it a shot. So I'm gonna go ahead and take all these pins out. And you can see how easy that was to just sew all the way across having that double row of pins that you pin in be that you can sew in between. And I found that that technique works really well for a lot of projects with Cuddle, is that pinning on either side of where you want to sew will keep the fabric really in check with what you want. So I'm gonna take these pins out. I'm gonna do the same thing, spray base those down and get ready for the next row. All right. So again, I'm gonna put the little piece of scrap paper underneath, make sure that I'm not gonna hit any the right side of my fabric with any of my basting spray, make sure that my machine gets covered. It's really ideal if you can have a separate place where you can go over, do all your spray basting, come back and sew, but this works in any area that you have to do that. So go ahead and spray it. And again, I'm gonna do the same thing where I kind of push it up, give it a little tug, make it lay flat. I want to make sure my backing fabric is as flat as possible as well. So as you're working your way, you're going to want to make sure and check that, make sure that everything is looking right, nothing got puckered or pulled, and then we'll just keep working our way through. Go ahead and turn this around so that I can access it a little easier. So feel free to kind of pick up, move the quilt, put it back where you want it to be. It really does make it a lot easier if you control the fabric like that. All right, go ahead and spray it one more time. Okay, on to our last two rows. So all of the quilt kits that are from Shannon Fabrics, all of the stitch and flip quilts are made this exact same way. This is the smallest version, but they do go up to 60, they do go up to 58 by 70 inches. So they become very large bed size blankets that are made the exact same way. So you can do those, once you've learned this technique, you can really take this and do all sorts of fun things with it. All right, the last row. All right. One more time. I guess technically it's two more times. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and take all my pins out. As we sewed this together, we used a 
millimeter stitch length on this baby lock machine. Generally it's what I use is a 3 or a 3.5. It's really important more than the number, it's more important that you're getting a nice clear stitch. So it should look more like this when you have the stitch or when you've stitched it out. It's going to be a nice clear stitch that'll be easy to see, kind of more like a top stitch is what it looks like. If you have too tiny of a stitch, you definitely want to open up your stitch length, get it up to a 3.5 or a 4. Sometimes machines have to be at a much larger stitch length to actually stitch well, and that's totally fine. It's not about the stitch length, it's about the stitch itself. And you'll need to kind of, yeah, probably play with it a little because in this fabric, in certain lights because of the gray, it almost looks like a tinier stitch. So I want to make sure that we can see really clearly how, how big those stitches are. All right, so now that I've gotten all of the strips sewn on, I'm going to spray base the last two strips and then we'll trim it up. So as I've been working on this, it's kind of come loose just a little bit here. So I'm gonna spray base the flannel onto the backing again so that that is secure. Now I can put that strip on there. I know that it will all stay where I want it to. Again, we're gonna give it a little tug as we pull it up. Make sure it's flat. Make sure that seam is flat. And then we'll move down to the other end. Okay, so one of the things that I do when I'm working with these quilts is I will try to pile it up onto the actual table so that when I'm doing any of this work, the quilt isn't falling off the table on me. For the smaller one, generally would be okay, but when you start working with the larger quilts, it's just a good habit to get into to keep all of the weight on the table as much as possible. So now we've got it all basted together, which is great. So now we get to trim it up. So at this point, it's been sewn together and quilted. So the quilting happens as you sew those strips on. Clean up all my threads here. So I'm gonna go ahead and lay this out. Now we have a quilt that is approximately 27 by 27 inches. In the pattern, it tells you how big it's supposed to be. And honestly, we don't ever really care. We just get it to a point that it's quilted together. Now we're gonna straighten it up. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna straighten each of the edges. I start with the outside edges, left and right edges, and then I will trim the top and bottom. Mostly I wanna make sure that it is gonna be even with the stitching that is already on there. So I like to line up the lines on my ruler with these stitching lines, the seam lines here. Sometimes it's easier to do it from the back. So you can turn it over. And if it's easier to see your lines from this side, sometimes it's less distracting. So we're gonna do it this way this time. When there's this much color and fabric on this side, sometimes it's a little hard. And with the Lux Cuddle, that line is a little harder to see just because it's hidden in with that fluff. It's a great thing because it hides it if your line isn't straight, but sometimes it does make it a little harder to see. So I'm gonna go ahead and lay this on my cutting mat so that in one of my lines, I'm gonna line it up with, I'm gonna even it up here with this line here that I sewed. And I'm gonna come down here and try to line it up with another one and get that side nice and straight. So when I trim this, I should trim a little bit of the front Whatever I've used for the middle, if I've used something that this is the flannel, if you use batting, it'll trim a little bit of that, and then you're backing to get them all nice and even. And I'm just gonna make sure and hold my ruler really nice and tight as I work, because it will want to slide on the plush fabrics. So I'm gonna go ahead and line this up again, make sure it stays nice and even. 
make one of my lines of the ruler match with the seam lines. See if I can get it to, to match down here too. Hold it real well and trim the rest of that side. So I'll do the same thing with the other side. Okay, and I always kind of do a little double check to see how far off these are always going to be a little bit off. And sometimes one will be a lot further than another. These look like they'll be fairly even, so it'll be good to trim it from this side without a problem. Again, I'm going to match a seam line. And sometimes we can kind of tug and pull and make things match up even better than we thought they did. Just lovely when that happens. Trim that off, slide it up. Now there's no way to trim this really with the craft knife, so you're definitely gonna get a little bit of mess when you do this, but you can just trim it off, and give it a good shake, vacuum those edges, you'll be good to go. All right, so now I've got the sides cut. So the sides are nice and even. And now we need to even up the top and the bottom. So for me, the biggest thing with this is to make sure that these are the same. So I'm gonna put these closer to each other. So here's my top strip and here's my bottom strip. Yes, <laughs> top strip and bottom strip. I wanna make sure that they're the same size. So I'm gonna measure them from the seam line. Like I said, you can do it from this side, you can do it from the back side. I'll do it from this side so you can see how that works this time. I'm gonna measure it and see how big it is. It's just about two and a half inches. I look down this, it's just about two and a half inches even. I'm gonna make it at two and a quarter inches just so that I can keep it nice and even. So really, I'm just gonna look for where my seam is matching. Here, here, at the two and a quarter line, and then I'm just gonna trim it off. And again, I'll match up my ruler to where I cut before to where I'm heading, and I just look for places where I can see that seam line a little bit better. And go for it. So what this does is just takes off any of your wobbly little edges, makes everything nice and neat. So now I need to remember that this was cut at two and a quarter, so I need to cut the other end at two and a quarter as well. So I'll lay this out, put my ruler on here, find the two and a quarter line, find on here where I can actually see the seams matching a little bit. It is definitely harder to see it with the Lux Cuddle. I will say that this should be nice and square, but you can definitely move this back over here so that it runs square against the cut edge you've already done. So if you wanna be sure that you've got a square corner on your quilt, go ahead and do that. Run that up and then pull it back to make sure that it's gonna to continue to be a nice straight line. And again, I can match this up at the other end, make sure that it's a square and trim that off. So next we're gonna tackle the binding. Before I get to the binding, I always wanna put the little tag on it. It comes with a really cute little made with love tag that includes washing instructions as well as what it's made out of, which is 100% polyester. So it's a great thing to add, especially if you're gonna give it as a gift, that you already have an easy explanation about how you wash it, which is in cold water, tumble dry low, and no fabric softeners. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna pin this to the edge of it and I'm gonna stitch it on now with a little zigzag so that it's in there later when I do the binding. What I found is if I don't take care of this now, I'm totally gonna forget about it later and then I have to take stitches out to put the, bind, put the tag back in when I should have put it in first. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and just stitch it down. And I'm just using a straight stitch with about a quarter of an inch seam allowance. I'll still have a half an inch seam allowance on, this, on the back when I do the binding. So if you wanna be extra careful about where it goes, you can absolutely line that up. All right, so now that my tag is on there, I can go ahead and prepare my bindings. We set those aside earlier, so let's get those out. 
All right, so this is the fabric that we set aside earlier for the binding. And again, a reminder that the binding, especially on these small quilts, is always going to be a piece that is the 60 inches wide of the full width of the fabric. So it's really easy to find it, pull it aside, put it away for later. Now we're gonna use it. Now we wanna make four one and three quarter inch binding strips. So we're gonna mark those out and then cut them. Three. So I'm just gonna line my ruler up here and mark my one and three quarter inch strips. If your fabric is a little wobbly, you can go ahead and trim that up before you mark your strips, but it should be pretty straight. Every once in a while I find one that needs a little straightening. Okay, so I've got my strips marked and I'm just gonna go ahead and pull this down and mark some more. I like to mark them one layer at a time and cut them one layer at a time. Helps me be a little bit more accurate. Now to cut out these strips, if you wanna keep the softness on the edge of the binding, it's really important that you cut them out with the micro serrated scissors or the craft knife. If you wanna just cut them quickly, you can absolutely use a rotary cutter and cut them that way. I'm gonna go ahead and use the craft knife because I really like that soft binding, the results from using that. All right, so as I get these cut, Cutting the Lux Cuddle will always make a little bit of a mess. So we wanna be very gentle with how we're moving it around. So as I cut it, I'm just gonna carefully push it to the side. When I'm all done with this, I'm gonna take it to the dryer, throw it into the dryer with a few minutes, let it toss around, and all the cuddle dust will end up in the lint trap, just like we did with the strips for the quilt, which is a very helpful way of dealing with it. If you don't have a dryer, like I said, just give it a good shake, and that's what we can do. But you do wanna make sure and get the cuddle dust off as much as possible before we start sewing our binding. So I'm gonna give these a good shake. Okay, so once I've got the, once I've got my binding strips cut and I've got them cleaned off so they're ready to sew with, I'm gonna go ahead and sew them into one long strip that will work for the entire binding. And I'm gonna sew those together just like I would for regular cotton binding. I'm gonna lay one out and I'll lay the other one at a 90 degree angle. With the Lux Cuddle Galaxy, which is what this fabric is, it's really hard to tell the nap, so I'm not gonna really care this time when I'm doing it. But if you're using a fabric like a Cuddle 3 or some of the other fabrics that have a very visible nap that you can really tell which direction they're going, make sure that you place them end to end so the naps match, then we'll fold them with 90 degree angles. I like to use my ruler, or my, I like to use my board to make sure that I've got those at a pretty good 90 degree angle and I'm going to go ahead and pin on either side of where I'm going to sew. So this is very much like we were doing before with the seam, marking the seam and then sewing on that line, pinning on either side. That's what we're going to do here and we're going to sew from here to here. You could go ahead and mark that line or you can sew. We have a silver sharpie is what I use for these marks when they are on a dark fabric. So I'm gonna line up my ruler so it goes from corner to corner. I'll draw my line on there and I can see it much better on the navy. So I'll pin the other one and then we'll sew both of those corners together. So I'm gonna sew these binding strips together. Again, 3.0 stitch length, straight stitch, and I'm gonna back stitch the beginning and the end of each of these seams just to secure them. I'm gonna follow the line that I drew to mark that 45 degree angle.
Now if you're sewing and you're having any difficulty with it getting through, the stiletto is great for being able to hold down the fabric, feed it underneath that foot. So now we've got the cord or the now we've got the strips sewn together. I go ahead and take my pins out and kind of check those binding strips, make sure they connect nicely. If they don't, I can take them out. These work out great. So I'm going to go ahead and trim off my tails. So these I want to trim at about a half an inch or a little bit less. I'm just going to trim them carefully. Throw away my scraps right away. Do the same one here. Throw those away. Give our binding a little shake. All right, so now we've got all of our binding strip. We're going to go ahead and put that on. So I'm going to start on a side. And I'm just going to pick a side. Doesn't matter. We're going to start somewhere along here. I tend to choose my middle section that I want to leave the tails at, and it's really just personal choice. There's no specific rhyme or reason for it. It's just what I like. So I'm going to find the end. There we go. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to pin this. So this is on the wrong side or the back side of the quilt. And I want to leave my tail in here somewhere. So I'm going to pin it here to keep that tail from flopping around. And then I want to leave about an eight inch tail. So I'm just going to kind of come down here and pick a spot. And this will be my starting point. At that point, I can pin a little bit, but I'm going to use my clips more. I really like my Clover Jumbo Wonder Clips, so I use these for binding, and I only need a few of them to hold it in place while we go. So then I can go ahead, give my quilt a little tug, make sure everything is where it's supposed to be. Then I'll go ahead and clip that on. So I'm going to cover up my tag, stitch that in while I'm doing my binding. Okay, and I'm going to put a pin in in between. So I kind of like to pin and clip, pin and clip. I'm going to do this on a couple of the other projects because this is my, my MO for being able to keep my fabric where I want it to be. So again, I'm going to sew with a half inch seam allowance using the side of my foot as the guide. I'm going to come in here, get it positioned, and I'm going to back stitch there because I do want to secure that spot. So with the binding, we cut this at one and three quarter inches. And at that size, we need to make sure that we're actually doing a good half inch seam allowance. So if you have a hard time keeping a half inch seam allowance, you can cut your binding a little bit wider. You can cut it at two inches and that will work as well. But I do like to cut mine at the one and three quarters, like it says in the pattern, and sew it with a half inch seam allowance. And sew all the way down this edge. I like to use my stiletto to keep the fabric flat as I'm sewing. So I'm going to get down here and I need to stop a half an inch from the end. One of the things that I noticed is so when I trimmed the back, this is a little bit short. This is fine because what we need is a half inch seam allowance, which is going to be about here and we still have enough that we'll catch. So this happens sometimes, and it's really no big deal. We're gonna sew down to this pin and go off the edge. I'm gonna lift my foot, pivot, and sew right off that corner. I'm gonna do this mostly like a traditional cotton binding, except we're just doing it with one layer. So now once I've gotten it to here, I'm gonna pull this over so I can show you guys a little better. So once I've got it to here, I've sewn down and off the side, and now I want to take this, pull it straight up this way, and then I'm gonna pull it back. I like to use my stiletto, I'll hold that here where I need it to be, pull all my binding, over, keep it nice and tight so that the fold is here and I can see raw edge here. So I want to still be able to see that raw edge. If I don't see it, I'm more likely to get a little pocket here. 
So now as we're going, we're gonna sew with a half inch seam allowance. We're gonna double check later to make sure that we caught that all. But I can measure that and I can see it's a little, around a quarter of an inch. We're all right. Okay, if it's a little bit short, you'll just have to take um, and trim it again. And sometimes that does happen. Do I have an answer to why? No. All right, so as I take it back to the machine, I'm gonna put it in so that I am going to start on the fold. Okay, so I wanna start up here at the corner and I'm gonna sew from this fold down the side. So I've kept a pin here to make sure that my binding all stays exactly where I want it, but I'm not gonna sew across the top. We're sewing across the side. It's really important. So I'm gonna get it underneath the foot. Come on, there we go. Get it with my quarter or my half inch seam allowance. Take a few stitches back stitch as well, and then continue down that side. And we'll do this on all four corners. Okay, so as I get down to the bottom, again, I'm gonna stick a pin about a half an inch from the bottom, or from the far edge. I'm gonna go ahead and clip this. I'll take that clip out and we're gonna sew all the way to the pin and then turn and sew off again. So as I get there, I'm very careful not to sew over the pin. I don't wanna break any needles. Now that we've gotten that sewn on, I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing I did before. I'm gonna pull the binding up, use my stiletto, pull the binding down. Pin it so it stays in position and then clip this and pin it down the next side. When I get to these seams in the binding, I'm also gonna clip those open. All right. So let's sew the next one. So we've got all four corners done and we're coming back to our beginning. So where we started here, we wanna sew down to this point. So when I've gotten to this corner, I'll always kind of unpin this tail and repin it where it ended so that I know that this strip needs to end here. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the, the little flip for the miter here. So I'm gonna pull it straight up so it comes straight off the side of the quilt. Hold it down with my stiletto along that edge. Pull it back. Get it nice and tight and then stick a pin in. Now, I'm gonna go and I'm gonna sew it. Oh, I'm so close, I'm gonna land right on a seam, darn it. Okay, so I'm gonna end right here. I'm gonna stop right here. So I'm gonna stick a pin in here. Aim for this one. Okay, and then we'll deal with the tails. As 
I come over this, I'm gonna try to keep that seam open with my little stiletto, get up to this pin, and do a little back stitch. Now, we'll tackle the tails. Okay, so as I get up here, I've got most of another strip, <clears throat> excuse me, that is left over. Okay, so these two strips are gonna overlap. So I've got most of a strip here, and I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna cut it off, just a little bit short, find my scissors here, and I'm gonna cut it before it hits the stitching on this side. So I'm gonna go ahead and just clip up the backing, try to make as little mess as I can, and I'm gonna keep this nearby, because I'm gonna wanna use it in the next step. So I've got my two pieces that overlap. Now to get them to join in a nice bias sort of seam, I want to get them to overlap the right amount, which is one and three quarter inches. You could measure this, but I like to use my piece that I just cut instead. So somewhere about in the middle of this gap, I'm going to stick my scrap piece down. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to use my Sharpie and then mark on one side. And then I mark on the other side. So you can leave these two together and mark one layer and then the other layer, but I have an easier time if I move them apart. I can see them a little bit better. Okay, so we're basically making it so that this side of the bias, or this side of the binding, goes one and three quarter inches past this one. So I'm gonna trim one off. You'll be able to see how that works. So now this will end, yes, just the same amount. So I'll go ahead and trim this one off. So I always kind of do a little double check when I do this, just because if I mess it up the wrong direction, I don't have enough fabric to make it happen. So one of the things that I like to do is cut this a little bit short. So I'm just gonna take a tiny bit off of one end here. I always make it about an eighth of an inch shorter than it needs to be. And that way I can sew it and kind of stretch it into place and it's never too big, which works well. So at this point, I need to get these two to come together at a 45 degree angle like, no, I need to come together at a 90 degree angle like we did before. So I'm gonna go ahead and pin this corner together. And then we need to pin on the other side of where we're gonna sew. So I'm gonna pinch this and pin over in this corner. Now one of the things about sewing this seam that's difficult is that I can see this corner but I can't see where this corner is. So I like to go ahead and add a third pin in here. You could also mark a line down here where it matches. Okay, but now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna sew from here to here. And I'm just gonna kinda aim for that. You could go ahead and mark that if that works better too. So this part is one of the more difficult parts for me just because I have all of this quilt and I've gotta get it bunched up over here. Leaving a little bit longer tails makes this a little easier. So this length is fine. Eight inches is about optimal. If you do them a little bit longer, especially if you have a larger quilt, it's definitely easier. So if you're doing the 68 by 70, no, 58 by 70 quilt, you're definitely gonna wanna leave a bigger gap in there to be able to do this easily, just because there's a lot of quilt to deal with. Okay, so I'm gonna aim for that pin where it lands on the edge. I'm gonna back stitch. Take it out. All right, so now I'm gonna take my pins out and I'm gonna check it to see if it works. And it does lay flat in there. So I'm gonna go ahead and trim these. I always do a double check, because I've definitely been known to think it would work and it didn't. So it's a way to foolproof myself. I'll double check it now, okay? So that's gonna work out just fine. I just trimmed it, it doesn't really matter the length, it's about a half an inch. Then I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna put pins in here. 
move this so I can see better. So I'm going to put pins right in this edge and hold this down. So when I did the other part of the binding, I relied a lot on the actual clips and they worked fine for here, but for this part, I need to keep this exactly where I have it. So the pins will do better with that than the clips. So now I will sew this down the remainder of the way. So I'm going to be careful along here to not let that binding grow at all. Keep it exactly where it needs to be, not let it stretch. And I can do that with the pins and also with my stiletto here. And as I sew, I'm using my half inch. I started overlapping the first line where I had stopped before and now I'm going to go over where I started so that it's a seamless join. So on the binding here, we had two spots that ended up, I was a little, I was a little disappointed because I had a binding join right here. But truth is, the reason that happened is because I didn't measure it carefully and make sure that it was 27 by 27, which is fine. So I needed to add a little bit more binding on that third one, which is why we give you three strips so that you can do that. The other thing is that when you turn this over, you'll never be able to tell that there was actually a binding join there. So it's not like a cotton binding where it's very visible. These will just blend together and no one will be any wiser. So really not a problem like it can be in a cotton binding. All right, so once that binding is all sewn on, I'm gonna make sure that I've got my thread tails clipped and I've got my pins out that I've put into those corners to hold it nice and tight for me. Okay. And then I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna check all of the edges as well to make sure everything caught, especially on the one end where it was a little short I just want to make sure everything was caught. If it's not, I can go back and fix it now before I finish the binding. This all looks good. Looks like it's all caught and working well. Okay, and there's my little tag that we got stitched in. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and finish the binding. The cuddle bindings are all done with a raw edge, which is a great way of doing it. It's so much faster because we don't have to turn anything under and there's no hand stitching. So we're just gonna go ahead and zigzag this in place with a raw edge because it's a knit, it's never gonna fray, it's never gonna wear. And because it's a luxe cuddle, we can fluff up those fibers and totally hide the stitches. It'll be beautiful in the end. So I'm gonna start at a corner, it doesn't matter which corner, I will often choose a bottom corner just so that if it doesn't turn out very nice, I have a um, tidying down at the bottom. So I'm gonna go ahead and clip this. I'm also going to pin my tag down because I have been known to have it flip and then stitch it down in the wrong place. So I'm gonna go ahead and pin it over to the side. So my, my machine is never gonna hit this, it just pins it out of the way and lets me not accidentally top stitch it in position the wrong position. So I'm going to clip this a little and then we'll go ahead and stitch a little bit at a time. So I don't clip the entire thing. I only do a little bit and then I move those clips as I go. That seems to work really well for me. All right, so I'm going to reset my machine to a zigzag. We're going to do a nice big zigzag. So I'm going to do four by four, and that should work really nicely to stitch my, um, my bias, no, to stitch my binding in place. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn the hand crank so that my needle is on the left side. And now as I get it in the machine, I want that needle to come down just to the left of my binding fabric. Because what I'm gonna do is cut, catch just the edge of it as I'm stitching around here. Push this down, so it goes right into the seam 
where the two meet up at the corner. I'm gonna put my foot down, do a little stitch, see how that's working. Does that seem to be right? It does. So now I'm gonna go all the way around. I'm gonna zigzag. So basically my zig is gonna come down on my previous stitching line and then the zag is gonna come over onto the binding. Because I cut this with the craft knife, this edge is really nice and soft, which means it'll be a little bit harder to see. So I'll just keep checking it and make sure it's in the right place and I'll use my stiletto to hold it where I want it to be. And then just stitch all the way around nice and slow. So this is one part that I will definitely take my time with, make sure that it's where I want it to be. The end result is worth it. And even though it can take a little bit of time, it's definitely faster than hand binding. Again, just holding my stiletto in place and stitching all the way around. So when we get down to these corners, I like to stitch all the way to the corner, finish my seam, and then restart the next corner. You can fold the fabric and turn the corner, but I have had not as good of luck with having a nice corner that way. So I go ahead and end each seam, do a little lock stitch, and cut my thread. And then start over the next corner. So I'm gonna go ahead and trim that close. And then I'm just gonna fold this over nice and tight, put a clip in here, and then I can start that corner up again. I'm gonna use my stiletto, hold that where I want it to be, make sure it's nice and tight in there, smash it down, <laughs> push it underneath the foot. So I'm gonna raise my foot just a little bit. Again, my needle is gonna come down on the left side I'm gonna do a little, I'm gonna do a little lock stitch. And I'll take a couple of stitches. And then I'm gonna clip some more down this side. I wanna get it going before I tackle this next step here. All right, so that's secure. Now I can go ahead and stitch this side. Okay, I'm gonna fold that corner over nice and tight. Stick a clip in there to hold it. Put another clip down here just to keep things where I want them to be while I get that next corner in here settled. So I'm gonna stick it under. I'm gonna lift my presser foot up a little bit higher. Make sure I can get that under there. Make sure it's down. Do a little lock stitch. And then go ahead and sew that side. All right, now as I come around to this corner, I need to get this corner tucked in. So I'm just gonna kind of push the fabric up and make it miter the other direction and then just hold it in place. Aim for that. Let it stitch just past the corner, tiny bit. And do a lock stitch to secure that end. All right, now I can take it out and trim all my threads. I can take my little pin out that hold my, held my label in position. I'll go ahead and take that out. And I have the whole thing bound. So I need to make sure and trim everything. And one of the things that people like about the cuddle binding is how fast and easy it is. But one of the things that happens when you do this zigzag stitch is that you can see it right now. So if you Look carefully, you can kind of see the zigzag tucked in here all along the edge. And because we used a gray thread, it's a little bit easier to see. The great thing about this stiletto that I love so much is that I can come back over these and I can just kind of scritch up those fibers and it pulls it right out of the zigzags and hides that. You can do this so that you stitch it on this side. Uh, so stitch 
stitch it on the right and then bring it around to the back, but I think it's easier to hide your stitches back here if it's not perfect. So that's why I stitch it on the back and bring it around to the front and then I hide the stitches here by just fluffing up these fibers. And then you're never really able to tell that it's just a raw edge again. You don't have to be super gentle. As long as you're using a polyester thread, it's gonna be nice and strong and not pop on you as you're doing this little scritching. You'll kind of do this all the way around, make it nice and soft and beautiful. It's a lovely finish. All right, so that's it. Now we have our own little We One blanket that goes with the Just Keep Swimming kit. So again, it's part of that. It's one of the three projects that are in the Just Keep Swimming kit. It's adorable and much easier than you might have thought. Thank you for joining me today at Missouri Star Quilt Company. Hi everybody, it's Jenny from the Missouri Star Quilt Company. We hope you enjoyed watching this video. If you aren't already part of the Missouri Star Quilt Company family, be sure to subscribe so you won't miss a thing. And if you click that bell, it'll notify you every time a new tutorial comes out. See you next Friday.